hello everyone welcome back to my channel thank you for joining me on another episode of prime math zoom in this session we will be talking about teaching mathematics online some tips so let's dive right in before beginning online teaching there are some important points to note because we actually need to think about the platforms we will be using and this will come as a result of the type of engagement we want to have with our students and also what we want them to do in our sessions and these are some points that we can consider get some training for the software we will use so whether we're going to use blackboard collaborate we're going to use Google Teams or Google Meet, or we're going to use Zoom or any of these other platforms. We need to understand how they work and also the different features that they come with. Use text chat during class. Well, for example, if you have a large class and you don't want students speaking out of turn, of course, they could use the raise hand icon depending on which one you're using. But it's also nice for them to use the chat option. As teachers, we will not be giving students permission to be talking with each other privately. So what we'll do is we'll disable that part so students only communicate to the class as a group or to us as teachers privately. Provide engaging and interactive activities. We cannot do online teaching and we are not being engaging and our students are not interacting with tools or us or other classmates. So there are some things that we need to consider for this. And further down in this session, we will be talking about ways to engage and have our students interacting with different activities. Ensure all work is submitted electronically. Well, since we're online and we're doing online teaching, we expect that work will be turned in online, work will be marked online, and so on. So ensure that students will be submitting their work electronically, whether in your Google Classroom or they'll be sending it in your WhatsApp or emails. We need to ensure that all the work can and will be submitted electronically. Providing quick feedback. So when these work works are submitted, we as teachers need to give quick feedback. Remember, you know, students are not really in front of us as if we were in class with them. Here, students will be waiting for your feedback. And so when students post their responses or their tasks or so on their Google Classroom platform or in your WhatsApp or emails, ensure that you provide quick feedback to them. Encourage and facilitate collaboration. We definitely do not want students to be working and learning in isolation. And for this, there are many features that we can use to facilitate collaboration. We have group activities that we can give to them. We also can have students manipulate our screen and explain to other students what they are doing. So we need to encourage collaboration. Make yourself available by WhatsApp, email, etc. Here, remember students will not be seeing you every day in class and students will need to contact you some way. So it is good if you're available by WhatsApp or email, providing that you are checking these things frequently so that you're not missing out on what students are asking or saying or commenting on. These things also can be done on the Google Classroom and other students can join in into the discussion. So please, these are some points to note, some points to practice to make our online teaching and learning experience fun and worthwhile. What ways can students be engaged? So we can have synchronous sessions and these are live sessions. We can have asynchronous sessions and these are pre-recorded sessions that students can watch in their own time. 
and we also can have online classrooms so right now you would have notice that google classroom is a very popular one but there are also others that you can use for your classrooms how to be engaging and interactive this is something that we all will need to be on top of our game on because now that learning is online we must be engaging and also have students interact with you the material and also each other so we can use online games and quizzes incorporate virtual manipulative in our lessons allow collaboration by using breakout rooms polls annotation use of a whiteboard remote control etc now these are some examples of some virtual manipulative some you might know already and are using while there are others that might be new to you however in this session we will not be going in this virtual manipulative in detail what you can do though you can leave a post in the comment section telling me what virtual manipulative you would like for me to explore in our next session so here virtual manipulatives we have didacts we have toy theater we have the math learning center and these links that you see here i will leave them in the description so that you can explore in your own time we also have desmos we have GeoGebra. we have math playground national library of virtual manipulatives we have Mathigan, and there are many more virtual manipulatives that we have. However, I'm just going to do a little run through of some of these virtual manipulatives that I have named so that you can see what they look like and what they are about. These are a few of the virtual manipulatives we can use. This one is didox.com. And these are some examples of the virtual manipulative. We have Unifix cubes, 10 frames number lines, dice, math balance, base and blocks, color tiles, things for fractions, things for place value, spinners. These are just some things that the didax.com provide. We also have the math playground. Very colorful, don't you think? And there are different things. Here we can see that they are in grade levels. We have math games, logic games, math arcade, story math, math videos so this is a very lovely one here we have the different concepts that we can click on and there are many more so look at all they have to offer right down here there are many more things that we can tap into we also have mathigon mathigon seems to be for bigger children but we can always check it out this is one of the virtual manipulative that we use mainly in the high school or upper primary so here we have the activities puzzles some uh applications of math stories about math and so on we also have the math learning center i like the math learning center i like to explore fractions on the math learning center and also place value so these are some things that the math learning center offer and you can always click on the different ones to explore we have toytheater.com this one is a lovely one so here we have different tools and we have the teacher tools with the virtual manipulative and we can click on any one of these to check out what it offers and what we have to do what we need to do in our math lessons this is not just about math though if you look we have reading art music some puzzles some kind of games so you can always check it out we have the desmos and there are different things that the desmos offer so here we have slope intercept form we have parabolas we have trigonometry we have conic sections. We have different things that this one offer. So this is nice for high school students and depends on what you're doing. It might be applicable in our primary classroom. 
we have GeoGebra. And can I tell you, I did not know that GeoGebra had a classroom section. So we can have things here like a Google Classroom kind of thing, and also to interact with our students here. So here we have the resources and different things that GeoGebra comes with. This is mainly about um, the geometry and even measurement concept, but it has some things for the other strands too. So you can check it out. It has many different cool tips on it. These virtual tools will come in handy whenever we're trying to have some sort of an interaction or engagement with our students. So we have virtual dice platforms. So we have the virtual world. We have the teacher-led resources. We have free online dice. We have a virtual dice rule. And these are just a few of those virtual dice. We have other virtual tools, for example, virtual spinner, like Wheel of Names, Wheel Decide, Adjustable Spinner, WordWall.net, Picker Wheel. And Picker Wheel is one of my favorite, along with Wheel of Names. But you can always try out some others. These here that we have, I'm just going to do a little rundown of what they look like. So that whenever you're exploring, you can see which ones you might have a special liking to and i will also leave all of these links in the description below these are some examples of the virtual tools that we can use so this one is called virtual dice roll we can click on one of the die and it will you know roll or we can click on through dice and it will roll and if you notice the numbers are represented here in cardinals too and not only in a dice fashion we have teacherled.com and we can select if we want one die or two dies. It's right here. We want to have three dies. We can select what we want. All right. We also have dice verti world and here we can select the number of dice we have two so say i select two dice and i can roll and i can roll again and this is showing us the sum of both dice but you can use this however you want for whatever concept you want we have free online dice.com and here it also asks us if we want to flip a coin so we have can we click on the die and roll the die we can click on this and get heads or tail we have wheel of names over here we can always so these are the spinner options. We can always decide what we want on them. So if we want to do some concepts, so we have, say we have square for one. We want to have rectangle. We want to have circle. Depends on whatever concept we are bringing about. We want to have pentagon. And say we only want four options. We're gonna delete the other options. And here we have these. So we can click to spin. And it will show you whichever shape you have landed on. So whichever concept you're doing, you can always adjust to show. Yes, this is fun about it. We can adjust to show whatever concept we're bringing about here. So this is good for like probability, statistics, and even other concepts too. For example, if you want to select persons to answer questions, you know, we can have different group names on this or whatever you'd like. We have Wheel Decide. Here in Wheel Decide, we can adjust to put what we want on each wheel. So these are the parts that we type in what we want on each of the sector in the spinner. Here we have one and we can always edit here again 
to show what we want here. This spinner is showing six different sectors. Up here, we click and spin. So this one is a little different from the others, but it's a spinner nevertheless. We have a wheel spinner. Let's look on this part here. All right, so we can click on spin it and it will spin. And we can also adjust to say what we want on it. So we have edit content here and those different things. We have a wheel picker and we can always select what we want on the different wheels. So it has yes, no, yes, no, but we can put in whatever we want here. So it's not really prescriptive. And remember, you can use this for even all the strands too, depends on what you're using them for. Also, there are some online quizzes and games that we can use. We can create games and we can also use some of the games that are already created by other teachers. We have mathgames.com. We have mathgamesforchildren.com. We have Mathapolis. We have Kahoot. We have quizzes. We have Quizlet. We have Quiz Wizard and Kahoot and Quizzes. Also, Quizlet have become rather popular. We also have live worksheets. We have Google Forms. And a lot of us might have Google accounts. So in our Google accounts, we might find Google Forms and we can create our worksheets here or quizzes here. Google Slides also can be used for games. We can create many different games with Google Slides. Now remember, if there are anything in particular that you want me to talk about next time or present on next time, you can leave that suggestion in the comment below. Also, what is fun about some of these online quizzes is that the answer is already inputted and because of that, we don't need to go through and mark them one by one by one because the correct answers would have been in already and it will just mark them instantly. That is something fun. I know that as teachers, we have many things that we need to do. To sit and to mark one one quizzes might be, you know, time consuming. So it is good to know that some of these you can always just mark, put in the correct answers and it will mark them for us. Thank you for watching. Remember to like share and subscribe and also leave a comment on what you would like to see next. Bye.